Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another session of Beer 30, our weekend, or weekend, yeah, Friday sanity session. Here's to you. I got to get the lid off first. See, you got to do everything in order. Take lid A off, put mouth on opening, and suck the bottom out of a beer. Here's to you. Mmm. This is my leftover beer from yesterday. I, if I, I drink till I'm what I call beard out, put the lid back on and save the rest till the next day and on and on it goes. But good evening, good Friday evening, maintain your sanity, think positive and all that stuff. Hey Google, tell us a beer joke. Where do typists go for a drink? The space bar. Mm -hmm. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. <laughs> All right, we got that going. So anyway, guys, from Capitan, New Mexico, on a rather cool afternoon right now. It's about 80, 78 to 80 out there right now. There's been some rain showers around, and it's pretty comfortable. I was outside reading a book, and uh, I read this morning. It's been a kind of a slow day. Well, not really. I mean, yeah, I guess so. I mean, well, I have a lot of those. <laughs> but having said that, uh, anyway, uh, what can we talk about? Well, first of all, let's talk about m maintaining our sanity. Okay, what, what actually, hey Google, define sanity. The ability to think and behave in a normal and rational manner, sound, mental, health. I began to doubt my own sanities. Okay, so you know what it is now. All you got to do is find it because I imagine most of you have lost it. So anyway, yeah, we uh, we enjoy our life the best we can and I racked my brain. I mean, today I'm thinking, you know, what can I come up with for Beer 30? Are there any growing up stories or anything I could think of? And hell, I think I've told you all the ones that were funny. You know, and I don't want to tell you anything that was not, you know, uplifting, so to speak. But what I will touch on is, uh, yeah, once I, uh, let's see, I guess I was 58 years old, and I was trying to figure out a way to hang on to, to retirement because I was running a little golf course in uh, near uh, Inks Lake or Kingsland, Texas, Burnett, Marble Falls area called... It was called Highland Lakes Golf Course, and I was running it, managing it for a gambler that traveled around all over the U.S. and made a lot of money. I, I didn't make much, but he did. <clears throat> and uh, and it was a good, it was a, a really nice thing, you know, to do. But but what happened was, it they when they opened the golf course in 1955, they had a 50-year lease concession lease, concession air lease from the Parks and Wildlife in Texas. And they, they ran it as sort of part of the state park, Inks Lake State Park in Texas. Well, that lease expired in 2005. Well, I wasn't old enough to retire, so I needed to kind of fill in some blanks. So, <clears throat> was that right? Let's see. And how old was I in 1906 or 2005? I'd have been 60. Okay, so they must have, the golf, oh, I know what it was. He sold the golf course to a, a buyer out of Houston in 2003. So that's what it was. So I left the golf course in 2003, and I had a two-year blank or more, and I didn't have a lot of money saved up, so I thought I better do something. So I checked around, and I did have an RV, because when I left the golf course, I had an RV, and uh, a little bitty travel trailer, I think it was 19-footer, and I pulled it with my uh, 79 Chevrolet pickup. I, no, I had bought a new Ford pickup at that time. I had a new Ford six-cylinder standard transmission. And the reason I got standard transmission was because I thought it had more towing capacity than, than automatic. See, the old school thinking was wrong. Automatics can tow a lot more than manual, but enough said. Uh, but anyway, I could tow it very easily. So I got to checking around on things I could do that wouldn't be too... Uh, hard, or, you know, something that I'd enjoy, and I wanted to kind of travel around, so I, 
I, I checked on a, a website called Work Camper, and uh, by checking them and some other places, I found a, a job, or I got an offer from a company out of Cumming, Georgia, just north of uh, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Big city, Atlanta. I want to tell you that. My mouth's getting dry. It's a good story. Hang in there. Hmm. So anyway, I found an RV park not too far from Cumming, Georgia, about 20 miles. I can't remember the name of the uh, area, but it was a nice little RV park. And I, I arrived there in like, I want to say, November-ish. It was cold. It was already cold in Atlanta. And uh, anyway, uh, so the name of the company I went to work for, for was called Southern Cross. And what they provided to gas companies all over the United States were gas pipeline inspectors. They, you, know, they, you had this little piece of equipment called a sniffer, or actually it was called a flame pack, but you, you carried it in your hand, had this little nozzle that hung off, and you drug it on the ground, and if there was any natural gas escaping from the ground, it would pick that up and combine with a, what, a little flame uh, at the end of the nozzle or near there. See, it would suck, no, it sucked the gas up this hose and then it would get, get to where the little thing was burning. And uh, if there was enough natural gas, it would set off a, a, a buzzer so you'd know there was a leak there. And it wasn't that complicated equipment. But, yeah, you know, the training was pretty interesting. And, and uh, at, at uh, the, the training facility they had, and the people were good, nice, and so forth, but it was a traveling job. You know, once you got through with your OJT, so to speak, in, in coming Georgia, uh, then you were on your own. You know, they just sent you, you just would arrive in a city and go to the gas company. They'd give you some maps, and then you'd go uh, you, use those maps and follow the pipeline in neighborhoods and different parts of the downtown area and check their pipeline, okay? And if you found a leak, you know, there was grade one, grade twos, and all that stuff. Grade ones were the ones where you had to shut the business down, you know, and then anything after that they could get to pretty much uh, when they chose to. Grade twos, you know, they get to them within a month or whatever. And grade threes were so little that, you know, they just got to them when they wanted to. Boy, my mouth is dry. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway. But anyway, it was an interesting job. I enjoyed the hell out of it because I got to travel around. I was totally independent. They give you a per diem, uh, uh, which covered all of your RV park expenses, your food, and more. So whatever I made in the way of salary, I saved. Okay, I, mean, I saved. In fact, I saved some of my per diem any, you know, money because that's how chintzy I was. Because I didn't eat out, man. I'd cook at home. I'd take my lunch during the day. All these other guys were going to you know, McDonald's and stuff for breakfast and lunch and all crap. Shit, no, man. Uh, but anyway, that's why I'm still here and probably most of them aren't. But anyway, but anyway, so you had this flame pack and, and you also had to carry these, uh, in the back of your truck, you had to carry one oxygen tank and then one of this stuff to fill up your little container for your flame pack every day. And you, know, you had a little ritual you went through. A lot of fun, I would say fun, it was easy. What was easy, what was fun about it and easy at the same time, there was no boss. You know, you just did your, your own thing. Hold on, I got to fly. Got his little ass. You want to see him? Think I'm not quick? <laughs> Paid the supreme price for lighting on me fly. Don't ever do it again. You won't smash, smash. Anyway, I've been trying to get him for an hour. Enough said. Moving along to gas pipeline inspections. Well, let me say this. So I started off, you know, with a guy. My trainer's name was Saeed. Ali, and he was from Pakistan, a Pakistani. Nice guy, hard to understand sometimes, because whenever he got uh, disturbed, uh, he, 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 I couldn't understand him. Anyway, and he'd say things like, why do you pain me so? Shit, I don't have a clue, dog. I didn't know it was. Anyway, so, so we went into parts of Atlanta that you probably wouldn't want to go in by yourself. You know, we went to the Korean town area, the Chinatown area, the downtown area. You know, you talk about street people. I mean, you know, people sleeping on the streets and stuff. Well, they didn't necessarily sleep on the streets, but when you went in the alleys in between buildings, yo. Anyway, so anyway, we got, I got my training out of the way and then moved along to, I uh, went out to, well, I think my first uh, stop out of uh, Georgia, yeah, I went to uh, 
Alvarado, Texas, which is south of uh, Dallas, a few miles, not too far. And, and I did that area, and then I went to uh, parts of Fort Worth and Dallas for, oh, I don't know, a few months, actually. And, and that was okay, you know, I mean, I was doing okay. And, and then I went to uh, Vernon, Texas for a while, Tornado Alley, you know, right near the Red River uh, border, you know, between Texas and Oklahoma. That's what they call Tornado Alley. And everybody out there has a storm shelter. But let me say this, and I'll get back to it in a minute. But, yeah, while I was in, and then I went to Waco and, and uh, stayed there a while, Waco, Texas. But anyway, guys, there are gas leaks all over everywhere. I'm telling you. I mean, there was never a day that I went out that I didn't find at least four or five leaks of some type. Okay, I'm telling you. And some of them were so bad that the person's yard would be dead, you know, do that half moon. We've talked about this before. And, you know, they would think it was chinch bugs or something killing their yard. It wasn't. It was natural gas escaping up through the soil and taking all the oxygen with it and, and, and killing the grass. And, you know, I, w I would inspect, you know, of course, the pipeline on the street or along the street and then from the street up to the house to where the meter was. And uh, that was, uh, I, would, I would inspect that all the way. And, uh, yeah, how many leaks did I find up to the house? Hell, a lot, man. And, and, yeah, it was the same old story, you know, that people had dogs in their backyard, and I didn't want to get bit, so I'd knock on the door. No, that dog ain't going to bother you. Oh, crap. I mean, well, get his fangs out of my leg, you know. So you had to be careful about that. As far as meeting weird people on the streets, you did a lot. And uh, But knock on wood, since they saw you had on a, quote, uniform with a badge hanging around your neck and stuff, they thought you were somebody and they didn't kill you, you know. So uh, I even had people, you know, invite me to come in their homes and uh, check their ovens and stuff. I, I did it a couple of times. And then after that, I just told them it wasn't company policy to do that. Uh, so I didn't. But, but yeah, so, you know, the, 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 the most interesting, well, not most interesting, but in another place I went was Columbus, Arkansas, man. I think that's the name of it. It's kind of north Arkansas. Uh, it's not too far from uh, the, uh, Tennessee. Uh, border. I mean, and we're Memphis, Tennessee, and West Tennessee. Or you got Memphis, Tennessee, in Tennessee, and then you got West Tennessee in in uh, Arkansas. I believe that's correct because they have a racetrack there. I went to it a couple of times. Dog races. I was the only white guy there. I'm telling you. I mean, never had any problems there. Everybody was fine. We we did good. So, but anyway, but I did. I saved a lot of money uh, doing that, and uh, it was it was uh, interesting. Uh, you know, uh, in uh, in Columbus, Georgia, you know, you, you had to be careful, man. You go out in some of these old swampy areas, you know, where these people live in mobile homes and stuff, and you, you don't know what they're making out there, man. You know, these are some poor dudes, you know, and it's that old, how you doing, you know, oh, I'm fine, everything's chicken but the bill, and it's a pecking, you know what I mean? Yo, you know, and, and you get five or six people together, you may have one full set of teeth, you know what I mean? Hello, here's to me. Yeah, and you'd go in these little, but of course, I was out in the country a few times, not many, and uh, you had to go in pairs in some of the areas, uh, and, and even in Dallas, there, there were areas you had to go in, in, in pairs, and in fact, in Atlanta, Georgia, the same way, and, uh, but it was, uh, it was fun. I mean, I learned a lot about the U.S. and the alleys. <laughs> I got to go in the back alleys everywhere. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and a, lot of, a lot of interesting towns, but, but I did save money. And at age 60, uh, I decided I had saved enough to coast to age 62 and a half till I drew my Social Security because I was going to draw it as soon as it was available. And so, uh, yeah, I, w I was in, uh, I can't remember where I was. I might have been in uh, Vernon. No, I think I was in, in Columbus, Arkansas. And the, the guy that was uh, our regional area manager uh, said he was coming that way. He, he wanted to find out what my plans were and so forth. And, and I told him, I said, man, I'm, I'm going to head back to Texas. He said, how long are you going to be gone? Because, see, you could leave a job site, you know, once you've completed all your maps and go wherever you wanted to for a month or two and then come back and go somewhere else. But I didn't want to do that anymore. So I told him I was headed back to Texas. And, oh, he came up with all this stuff he was going to do for me and how much 
how easy my life was going to be. But they were just making the transition at that time uh, to all pretty well automated stuff. In other words, the maps were uh, on, uh, on screens and, and, uh, and that was tied into the gas company as well as uh, the Southern Cross offices in Cumming, Georgia, and they knew exactly where you were every second of every day that you were out. You know, once you got up in the morning and you logged in, from that point forward, they knew where you were every second, okay? And, uh, and you know, I didn't really like that because, you know, every now and then I'd take a break, you know what I mean? And if I wanted to quit a little early, I would. And did I? Yeah, sure. Hell, everybody, I mean, our manager for our area, hell, we'd meet at two or three o'clock <coughs> at a McDonald's or somewhere and go over all our paperwork and uh, do whatever we needed to do, and then psh, we were done. And we, I bet we started around seven, so we, it wasn't like. And you know, we covered the mileage that we that we were supposed to. You were supposed to cover around, average around five or six miles of pipeline a day, and uh, you know that was pretty good because whenever you stopped to check leaks and stuff, because you had this probe, you'd probe a hole down in the ground about as big as your little finger here, it'd go down about three or four feet, and because you had to bang, bang, bang to get it to go down, because you had to drive it through asphalt sometimes. But yeah, and then you'd drop your little probe down in there and run your test. And, uh, yeah, you could tell if it was a grade one, two, three, whatever. And, uh, yeah, and then you'd just call the gas company and, or you'd write it up, turn it into the gas company if it was a, anything other than a grade one. Grade ones you had to call in right away. What was a grade one? Grade one was a major freaking leak, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, you know, I had to shut down a, uh, a little uh, taco stand or one time in Atlanta because, I mean, uh, it, the gas was so bad under the slant foundation that it was putting the flame pack out. You know, when you get too much gas, it won't burn, okay? I mean, it, it'll put a fire out, you know, but you, you gotta have the right mix, mixture of oxygen and gas. <laughs> yeah, we had so much gas, it was ridiculous. In fact, the guy inside, the manager said, you know, I thought I'd been smelling gas lately. Well, you damn sure had. I mean, but anyway, they came out and took them probably a couple of hours and they broke the concrete up, had a backhoe, got everything, you know, they do it pretty quick, I'll give them that. And, and they use all kind of a brass equipment so they don't spark and blow everybody up. But anyway, that's kind of the day on the uh, story on the deal. And then, I, and then when I bought that little, I bought two lots in Kingsland, Texas off of uh, Comanche Drive. That's where I lived for years, as you know. I built the, the cover there and had the slab. That's how that came about because I had to have enough money to acquire that property too because I couldn't afford to pay uh, RV park rent and make it to age 62 and a half. So, yeah, but the way, when I bought the land from the guy, uh, it was like, I think I paid, oh, it wasn't very much. But anyway, uh, but it was just raw land. I mean, and I had to find a lot that was that had a spot that I could back my RV in that would, you know, that didn't have trees all over it and stuff. I mean, I had to be able to get my RV on it immediately because I was going to live there right away. And I did. And so I found a couple of lots and I just backed my RV right across the uh, uh, brush and stuff. I got a damn gnat now. I got him. Ha! You damn gnat. Boy, they're paying the price today. But anyway, but I just backed my RV in over the brush and all that crap. And I had a little Honda generator. Uh, yeah, and I hauled water and ran that generator for about, oh, a year and a half until I got the water hooked up. And then I got the electric hooked up, and then it was Disney World after that, as you know, because then I added the concrete slab and the cover and all that stuff. Yeah, and it was all right. So that's kind of how my life has gone, but now it's time for me to enjoy a swallow of beer and for you to chug a lug, chug a lug. Here's to you, here's to me. Mm. Should we ever disagree? Here's to me. But anyway, guys, what is sanity all about? Enjoying your life, man. I mean, trying to, you know, keep your mind alive. And, you know, my mind was alive today because I was trying to think of something to talk about. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, you know, it's hard to come, you know, these old stories. I mean, and these, this was kind of, I don't know, it's okay. But, yeah, it was an adventure, you know. So for those of you out there that are RV types and you're traveling around, I mean, work, uh, I'm sure Work Camper, it's W-O-R-K-A-M-P-E-R, WorkCamper.com. Yeah, and, you, and they got all kinds of stuff, man. I mean, yeah, you do. If they'll find you something, or you'll find something through them, I guarantee you. And uh, and it's and mo and they're all traveling. Most of them are traveling jobs, so you can travel from one spot to the other. So, 
But anyway, check them out. But having said that, guys, on a Friday night from here in Capitan, New Mexico, this is Rusty78609 saying, <whistles> thumbs up. Carpe diem. Adios. Bye-bye. Buy anything you want anytime. But if you think about it, use the link to Amazon products in the description of all my videos. Some of you are and some of you have. Thank you very much. And then what else? Drink plenty of beer and whiskey and whatever the hell you want. And if you want to smoke a bud or do a blow a do a joint, whatever, you do it. It's your choice. Here's to me. Let's go. Mm. Pretty good. But anyway, guys, enjoy your Friday evening. Uh, you know, it's yours to enjoy. Tomorrow's Saturday, Sunday coming up. Enjoy your weekend. Chill out. And uh, keep your health, man. Yeah, focus on your health a little bit. Stand guard at the door of your turnip, I mean your head. And, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, all kind of negativity, man. But just put a wall up, enjoy your life, and uh, it's been fun. Anyway, guys, enjoy your weekend. Carry on. Adios. Bye-bye.